This incident happened around three years ago and still gives me shivers when I'm walking alone on the road. I worked there as a customer service representative and it was my late night shift. When my night shift was over, it was around 11.30 p.m. At that time, I had a small car, but I usually parked it at my aunt's house because the parking lot at my company was always full when I arrived. After a while, as I was walking, I felt some stickiness and some resistance on my shoes. I actually thought it was some chewing gum or some dog waste or something. So I just rubbed my shoes on the grass next to the pavement to get off the substances. As I walked on, after 10 seconds, I felt the same thing again. I grabbed my phone flashlight and pointed it at the ground. At that moment, I realized something was truly off. I saw a blood trail, just like someone had dragged someone on the pavement after murdering them. I hadn't seen this the whole time because of the thick darkness. As I followed the blood trail with my eyes, I saw a person lying on the bench about 50 feet away next to the bus stop. For a fact, our schools taught us that, in general, blood can start to dry relatively quickly, forming a tacky or sticky texture within a few minutes to an hour. Complete drying typically occurs within a few hours, but it may take longer if the environment is humid or if there's limited airflow. The whole day was sunny. Also, it was quite windy out there. So this should have happened right before a few minutes ago, if the blood is still sticky. The previous bus was at 11.05 p.m. If they had noticed him, the police should have already come. I tried to call the police, but I felt unsafe standing alone there. I thought it was better to stay away from there and call the police as soon as I got home. So I changed my mind and walked to my aunt's house. I had to pass the bus stop because there was no other way to go there. As I walked past the bus stop, I looked at the face of the person, and I got goosebumps and felt sick. I couldn't identify the man's face because it was chopped off by a sharp object and just rubbed against the floor. The left part of the face was heavily damaged, and I could even see some parts of the brain. His yellow shirt was torn from the chest, and I even saw some deep stabs. And for sure, the blood trail was because he was dragged on the floor by someone. After that, I went back to my aunt's house, but I was shocked again. This time, it was not a large blood trail. It was just small droplets of blood on the pavement. I had no choice. If I wanted to reach my house, I had to go along with this. After walking about another 50 to 60 feet, I saw the blood droplet trail just went to an alleyway to the right. I passed the alleyway and felt kind of safe from there, but I kept looking back just for my safety. And at that moment, I saw a creepy person with a white shirt and black pants with a creepy smile that I never forget. He had a piece of shattered glass holding with his left arm, and small droplets of blood were dripping from it. His hand was cut from the glass too. I immediately realized this is some sort of serial killer or some person with mental problems. Some serial killers may not feel pain like others do, because their minds work differently. They might not care about getting hurt, which can make them do dangerous things without worrying about the consequences. Individuals with antisocial tendencies may exhibit reduced sensitivity to pain due to factors like dissociation, high pain tolerance, or substance abuse. That's why he might be holding a sharp piece of shattered glass, even though it has given him deep cuts to his hand. As soon as I saw him, my adrenaline hit me and I ran so fast to my aunt's house within a few minutes. When I looked back, the creepy person with a bloody suit was chasing me a hundred feet away, so I quickly got to my car and locked the doors. As I tried to get out of there, the man threw the piece of glass at my window but my window didn't break. But he started to pull the door to unlock it and started to hit his face rapidly with a creepy smile. His head was injured and started to form a bloodstain on the window. I was so scared that I hit the gas so fast and I hit the telephone box on the other side of the road. I saw he was still following me from the side mirror. I reversed the car and hit the gas pedal. This time he hit the car and he went and dragged across the road a few feet away. Then I drove to my house at full speed and luckily there were no vehicles on the road at that time. If not, I'm sure I would have hit a car or something and died. As soon as I got home, I shut the door. The next morning I reported the incident to the police and they started to investigate it. The person murdered was a normal person just like me walking after his night shift, and the police couldn't find the killer. It's been three years now, the serial killer is still out there, 
it still gives me goosebumps because if I had finished the shift a few minutes early back then, I'm sure I would have been killed by that creepy guy.